Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Who's Judging podcast. I'm your host, Connor, and today we have a very special guest, Vistopia, an awesome musician who raises money for animal rights causes and the vegan movement through his music. How are you doing today? Oh, thank you. I'm 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 really good today. How are you? Pretty good. Nice and early, getting some work in. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, nice and early for you. Here it's eight o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> in the it's evening. Not, it's not too early here, but just this is like when I get out of bed usually, crawl oh. out. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so basically how I like starting all the interviews is just if you can explain your vegan journey, how it came about, and how long you've been vegan. Absolutely. Um, well, it, it kind of the vegan journey started uh, 2011, but I, I could back it up a bit more because um, it was back in '95. I listened to like a Swedish punk rock song, uh, and they had like lyrics uh, asking the question that what what would we, we will you say to your children when we hand over the planet in this state and i was like damn i need to do something about the uh, environmental issues and that started one thought um but then it kind of it was like five years later i took the step into becoming a vegetarian so i cut meat off and um eggs as well um but i, I unfortunately stayed with the dairy products until 2011 and okay. um i got a tip uh to see the best speech you will ever hear by gary jurovsky and Ooh. i watched it and i was nailed to <laughs> to it and it was like just i just was like soaking it up and even though I didn't have to, I watched the Q&A for like 10, 15 minutes as well. And I was like, I have no excuse anymore. I just, yeah. now I just got to go vegan. Wow. So, I mean, that's awesome. Uh, yeah. Um, it's one, like, like many vegans say, it's like, it's one of the best choices I've made in life. It is. Right. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was uh, on the 21st of November, 2011. So I just like celebrated my 12th anniversary. Awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it feels good. Yeah, really good. Um, it took a bit longer to get involved in, in activism, but I'm into that now as well. And yeah, everybody has their steps. It's yeah. Like stepping yeah. stones. Yeah, you know, it's a decision that we all wish we made earlier than we did too. That's very true. So, would you say you went vegan for the environment first, or that's just kind of what got you in the door? Um, the environment was like the first thing that like struck a nerve, and that was back in '95. But when I got this, the decision to go vegan, it was completely for the animals. Okay. Yeah. Um the best so, reason to do it. I believe so. Uh it's it's the most important reason to do it, I believe. Yeah, uh, cuz the people that go vegan for the animals are the people that tend to stick to <laughs> Oh, for sure. It's the best motivator <laughs> out of the big ones. Yeah. Health, environment, and animals. Animals is the biggest motivator. It keeps you going yeah. for it. How about so, yourself? <laughs> yeah, I've been vegan for a little over eight years now. And oh, I definitely cool. went for the animals as well. And just like you, I did go vegetarian first. I think a lot of us do. Um, I think it's easier for you to kind of take steps in it. I think it does make it last longer than trying to just cut it all out at once. Um, for, for some people. Yeah, for some people. Um, I, I think it depends. And, and it uh, depends on what it is that gets to you um but no no reason to speculate right. <laughs> i know i know yes. why i'm vegan it's for the animals and that's also the reason why i um 
but I do what I with the music as well. Right. So with the music, uh, how did you get into music? Were you into music before or did you get into it after you went vegetarian? Uh, no, um, actually I started playing guitar. That was also back in 95 and it was like a bit of a roller coaster, uh, more in, more during um, some years. The first years was really intense playing and was also into a, a few bands. And later on, I had like years, a few years where I didn't play at all, uh, but probably mainly because I was studying a lot. Um, but music has always been like a very important um cornerstone go ahead go ahead <laughs> um mu music has always been like an important cornerstone for me uh, in life uh, before i started playing i was listening to music like as much as i possibly could and um like 10 years ago i started singing more and uh, taking a few some lessons as well um and then uh, just recently, just this week, I bought myself an uh, electric bass. So now I'm, now I'm uh, going to um, put some hours into that as well so uh, I can make more music, more efficient. And uh, yeah, so music been with me a long time. And or rather, I would say, but it wasn't. It wasn't the obvious choice, you know. Um, uh -huh. It was like it took me a long time, uh, even though I had like thought of getting into activism. Right. It took me like four or five years before I could actually take that step. And uh, even when I started doing activism, like outreach, talking to people and in, in the streets, and um, um, I had a few acquaintances that did like activism through music and i thought that that's awesome they should do that and yeah it's a will, good idea yeah and i will stick with writing about life and love and all the things that most people tend to do uh -huh. um but then i went to an animal rights camp and i was overwhelmed in a very positive way with uh, all uh, there were uh, were people holding lectures, and one woman in particular, um, she was talking about the importance of taking care of your mind when you are involved in activism, um, because it can really drain you from everything that you see and experience. And she brought up this term, dystopia. And I thought that, well, that was really, that's a really cool word, mm -hmm. like just in itself with the letters. Right. Um, then she explained the meaning of it. And I was like, wow, that's a really important word as well. And my first thought was actually, it would be cool to make a song called Vistopia. And maybe I could do that with some of the other guys that are already doing this kind of music uh -huh. but then i got back home uh from this camp and then like the, the next four days after i got home i wrote my first three songs and then i was like okay <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna do this <laughs> in my own way right so that was august 2021 Nice birth of a new project. Yeah. And then, so just for the listeners, I wanted to get the definition for the term. So for Vistopia, I have it defined as an existential crisis experienced by vegans arising out of an awareness of the trance-like collusion with the dystopian world. That sounds correct, right? Yeah. And there, there's also like a, a very short explanation for it, which, which it, I find really good because um it's it's it says so much and it's um the uh, <laughs> if i can find the words <laughs> um the anguish of being vegan in a non-vegan mm. world yes 
that's a, and a that's simple way of putting it. Yeah, a very simple and very powerful statement. And, and, and that's the thing. That is the thing that we, or most of us, uh, experience like on a daily basis. Yeah. And it, it can be very traumatic and tiresome. Yeah, and this, well, this woman, Karna, she, uh, she brought up like you can become like fr frustrated, angry, uh, sad, depressed, uh, and all these like emotions that are very negative and yeah, can have a sure. really deep and, and, and a negative impact on you. So, um, but I find as I, as I like, I take the word with me through this music, um, like this name of my artist name now, and I find surprisingly many vegans that still never have heard of this term. Yeah, I hadn't heard of it until I, I was looking up stuff for this and then I saw the term and I put it all together. I was like, it's a, I mean, it makes sense. Dystopia, Vistopia, they just went right with it. Yeah. Okay. So see, see, you're spreading <laughs> the term too with your music. Yeah. And uh, with with that, I, I also like to give cred, credit to um, Claire Mann, who, who is the person that co coined the term, an Australian author and psychotherapist. Uh, she has been working with a lot of vegans and helped them in their journey. So, and she has written a book about it. I can really recommend the read uh, or like listening to the audiobook. There's some Got really it. good stuff in there. What's what's the name of the book? I it's actually Vistopia: The Anguish of Being Vegan in a Non-Vegan World. Oh, got it. Yeah, I'll yeah. I'll put that in the end so viewers can <laughs> check it out as well. Yeah, that's that's a good thing, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Thanks for the recommendation yeah. for them. Absolutely. And, and I'm kind of curious, what is your songwriting process like? like? How do you get your emotions down into words that make sense in the song? Oh, um, yeah, it's it's very, it is an emotional process because, um, and it, it hasn't like an obvious um, start or like goal in the process. It's, it, it can come anytime during the day or like in the night as well. Because okay. ever since I started uh dystopia it, it has become more frequent that i wake up in the morning and i have like a music idea in my head mm -hmm. and then the first thing i do is just go up and get the guitar and try to hum hum through the melody or write down the words that's that are in my head and and see if is this something i can work with can i do something with this or is it just some weird gibberish <laughs> Uh, most of the time, it, it's um, something I can work with, and I try to always make a first demo uh, of the music, and from that point, I can really tell if if it's something to keep working with or something that uh, I, I should kind of let go of. But so far, um, the, the only difference is that is the variety of genres. Uh -huh. And so I, I'm not holding on to any specific genre. And even though if you come into like listening to the music, I have six single released at this point. And it's like rock is the main um, representation of genres uh, at this point. But it's still a variation in, in rock as well. It's like punk rock, pop rock, uh, power metal. But uh, I have just released uh, two Christmas songs, and those are very far from rock music. <laughs> All right. Yeah, walk <laughs> me through those. How did you come up with those, and kind of what, what's the message in them? Um, I'm, I'm not really sure how I... Um, the first one, I'm not really sure how I came up with it. It was just like a phrase that came up in my head. And I, I just went with it. And, and it's just like the, the song starts. Please let me introduce myself. Uh, um, 
yes, uh, please inter please let me introduce myself. I am your host. I am your Christmas ghost of your past and present. And that's really inspired from the Charles Dickens uh, A Christmas Carol uh, with Ebenezer Scrooge in, in the in the main character role for the for the tale. And I wanted to when I got that in my head, I was like, yeah, I should it would be nice or cool to like uh, uh, some kind of fairy tale storytelling like that, but with the aim to get the vegan message across. Right. So Christmas Ghost is about, yeah, the ghost coming, knocking at your door and telling you that, hey, um, I see that you are living your life in a certain way, but it's time to let go of the traditions, even though I can see it's a thing. Uh, it's time to change. And it's time to open the eyes and see what what's happening happening um, in, in areas where we don't look. It's like a part of the of the lyrics is also like um, looking. If we take a look in the stables, we won't find baby G's. Uh, we will find the piglets suffering, and uh, they will soon be killed. Like, and so we need to change. So. I really wanted to focus on the message that, yeah, traditions are important, but they are not more important than the lives of other sentient beings. And we can still keep the main part of our traditions, just make them better. Right. No harm. Yeah. So with these songs... Um... Or were they like the other ones? Did you come up with them spontaneously? They just came as an idea in the in the morning or at night, or did you sit like kind of put a plan down? Like I want to put out a Christmas song this year. No, no, it it came very very spontaneous. Actually, I started writing <laughs> Christmas Ghost in April this oh. year, and uh, it was a process that was a little bit longer because I, I really wanted to have the whole story, um, and and. I needed some time to get the words right throughout the song. Um, and the other song, Christmas Blues, it that one came very, um, very spontaneous and uh, in the morning. And it was, um, it is the fastest song I've written and recorded ever. Um, <laughs> I, I woke up one day, it was like five days before the release of Christmas Ghost, and I was like, wow, I have this idea. And I started writing on it, and it, it was like two hours later, the song was done. Wow. And so I jumped to my computer and started recording, and it was like from I started writing the song until it was recorded, mixed, and mastered, it was like two and a half weeks, I think. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> what is that process usually like? Like for your uh, typically, how long does that take from your idea to the writing to the recording to the mixing? Uh, a few months. Okay. Yeah. So that was really a record yeah. <laughs> um, of um, rare. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, whatever the word is uh, I'm looking for there. But uh, it was also like, it was nice to have this, okay, so I've just written a Christmas song. It's still like October, but so I could make it. <laughs> I could make a release for this Christmas. It would be a bit taunting to know that I would have like another Christmas song and need to wait a whole year for the right. release. So I, I really put a lot of effort into uh, making it happen, but it wouldn't have happened if I never had had the help from uh, Pete who played the uh, uh, electric guitars on, on this song. And he 
put down an amazing guitar solo for this tune. It was like spot on. Yeah, the song is great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and uh, Richard, um, who uh, did the mix and master for this song, he, he's also uh, a, a big reason that it was possible to do this because if I had gone anywhere else with it, it would be like, oh, sorry, man, have schedule full. So maybe in January, February, March or something. But Richard was like, hey, cool. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's do this. Yeah. And I figured that I would have to wait a couple of weeks. But just a few days later, after he got the files, was like, yeah, how about this? <laughs> <laughs> and he threw up the first mix. So uh, in intense uh, period, but very, very fun, very inspiring. And uh, yeah, Definitely. I'm very pleased with how it came um, came together and how it sounds. Yeah. How does that process typically, how's your experience been with collaborations with different artists? Um, I'm very open to collaborations. I'm always looking for them because I believe it's it's a fun thing. Uh, I think we should support each other in this movement. Um, and um, it's like whenever you collaborate with another person, you always get like new perspectives, new ideas. And when someone like throws in an idea that you never really could have thought of, this idea will bring new ideas for you and hopefully they can like build on each other and uh, so that's my experience so i love collaborations but it doesn't always work out so it's it's something to be really humble about and very um communicative is that the right word uh, Sounds right, yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, honest about as well so you shouldn't like if you let someone like play on a song or sing or whatever, and if it if it's not like speaking to you, like uh -huh. yeah, this this is what I'm looking for, then just try to be honest in a kind way. And so it's so like, sorry, it it's not really. Could you try this instead? And if that's not possible, then hopefully you can do something else in the future. And uh, um, so, but it is. It, it is a great thing. Collaborations is awesome. Yeah, you just got to be receptive as an artist because you're trying to make a, you have an idea in your head of what you want and you want to make sure that the song ends up like that. Yeah, like that or better, which right. is, <laughs> which is um, my experience most of the times. Because like I said, someone comes in and they, they throw you, like an idea of something and it's like wow this is this is much better than i could have done myself or than i had like an idea idea for myself it's like pete with his guitar soul it was like uh -huh. wow this this is this is exactly what i'm looking for i couldn't have i couldn't have sat down and tried to do it myself but when i got it it was like yes this is perfect <laughs> yeah so that's fantastic thing because yeah, like I said, it it gives me ideas for the rest of the the song, and sometimes it's like depending on the genre and depending how much room that specific instrument has in the song, it could be like, hmm, now I gotta change the way I sing. Right, you bounce or, off each other's energy. Yeah. So it's it's a really nice process, but uh, I'm I'm gonna go back to uh, an earlier question there because yeah. I I just talked I only talked about the first song, uh, Christmas Ghost. The Christmas Blues is is built on my own experience, unfortunately, uh -huh. and um, 2015, just like I'm singing in the song, uh, was the last time I. Uh, sat down and had a Christmas dinner with a whole my whole family, uh, with like mom and dad, my brother and his family, uh, small small family. But it was like just like in the lyrics, the table was filled to the brim with animal products, and I 
I felt awful. I I had such a huge level of anxiety and I just wanted to get out of there. Um, And and that's what I'm seeing in this tune. So it's all about this. And even though I've been trying (laughs) to talk to them on later years, because they feel like, oh, you don't want to, you don't want to celebrate Christmas with us. Uh, And it's like, yeah, I do. I only don't want to sit by the table and feel bad. Of course. I don't want to take your feelings in as well. Yeah. Because I've always like loved Christmas, but I mean, recent years has gone like downhill. (laughs) Man, that's just because of all the, all the, um, animals that suffer uh, needlessly because of traditions once again traditions of course yeah um so i i kind of wrote this song in my frustration <laughs> regarding them not understanding my point so i was like i need to really get this uh, off my chest i need to like if they would ever ask me this question again i could just uh, Okay, just listen to this song. <laughs> it's there about us and our relationship. So if you if you don't get it until now, so please listen and let me know your thoughts. Right. So you're right with all your messages. There's a lot of traditions that can be easily changed without changing yeah. the meaning of the holiday or anything. Exactly. Just just put aside this crazy uh parts of um, and rituals where you like slaughter animals for for good luck or to um, please the gods or whatever and that's just crazy it's like Gary Jurovsky said like okay so we do all these things to animals we cut their tails and we burn their beaks and we break their feathers and everything. So if this is everything, if all these things are done in the name of the Lord, then what the hell is the devil doing? <laughs> I mean, that's a good point. <laughs> and I, I, I love that. And that is like, uh, and so it, um, that leads me to uh, on, um, uh, something that, I'm not involved with, but something I look very much forward to. Uh, have you heard of the uh, upcoming um, documentary um, with the same people that have done Cowspiracy and Suspiracy? I think so. Is that is it yeah. the religious one? Yeah, Christspiracy. Okay, yeah. So yeah, that will be about it. that will be very interesting. I uh, can't wait to. I mean, yeah. It's definitely an interesting topic on veganism and religion and the two combinations. Because, I mean, we just had an episode on this where I had a couple of my friends on. Um, but it's like, in my opinion, what the core values of the religion should be are pretty similar to what the core values of veganism are. But for some reason, it doesn't connect. No. Yeah, I totally agree. And that, I mean, it's just mind boggling. <laughs> no. it's, it's, it's really weird. Um, and I, actually, I could I could go back and answer another of your question <laughs> a bit more, okay? Because uh, you asked me like, what what is the what what is that start? What is starting the process of writing? And um, actually, it's when I find like small segments, or it could be a phrase, or uh, at some points, it's actually been like memes. <laughs> Um, and a, a future song, it could be the next release or the second next to come. Uh, but since we're talking like of this religious, uh, aspects at the moment, um, I have, um, a heavy metal tune that will be called man is the devil. And it's, it's actually inspired by a meme that says if animals had a religion, man would be the devil Mm, it's a good line yeah so it just one day i was out walking it was like hey wait i have (laughs) i have a melody for this and yeah okay 
I need to go inside and record it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, I could definitely see the meaning behind that and it should be a good song. Um, I'm, I'm very pleased with that one. And we, we, it will be the most heavy one I had have done so far. And the future will offer quite a few new genres where it's like more soft music, uh, soft like pop or maybe country influenced or folk rock. And yeah, the genres will be all over the place. Uh, the message will be the same animal rights and veganism. That's the thing. And, right. I yeah. think that's awesome. The more genres you span, the more viewers you should get by people who like different genres as well. I, I think so. But actually, the reason for me writing in different genres is the way I'm creating. Uh -huh. uh, I, I can't really help where things are going. I can't really push everything into be like rock music because I get stuck. Of course. But you have a very good point, and that was it came to me quite early as well, and was like, okay, if I allow myself to just write whatever comes up, then maybe I have one song that will find one person, and I have one song that will find another person. Mm -hmm. So, and and people tend to listen more to like singles than to whole albums nowadays, anyway. So, yeah, I, I agree with that. <laughs> yeah. So. I just go with with the flow and whatever comes up it, yeah that's what I roll with <laughs> right so bouncing off of your christmas story about how unfortunately 2015 was your last family christmas correct mm -hmm. yeah um, i had a question just based off that and the meanings of your songs your new songs yeah. what advice would you give to vegans who are overwhelmed with the current christmas traditions and family traditions and everything like that since you have experienced it that that is a very good question and it's a very tough question because what do you say when push comes to shove mm -hmm. <laughs> it's it's like you need to be true to yourself i think that is the most important part and i was like okay i i, I went vegan in 2011 and 2015 i felt that oh, i just had it uh -huh. I, I can't take it anymore. I've been trying to just focus on my plate and all the good things I'm eating, but all I can smell and see and think of is all these crazy stuff that they yeah. are eating. So, and it's so it's hard. It's like I came to this point where it's like, no, I can't do this anymore. And I told them, like in October the following year, because that was also like a tough decision to share. Right. Like, if you want to celebrate Christmas like this, I'm sorry, but I won't be able to join you. Then I will find some random vegans that also want to have a, a Merry Christmas. Of course. And uh, when I said that, I really meant it. So if everyone in my family had gone like, okay, then I would have done so. Um, so I think that anyone that going like processing these thoughts and feelings, um, and it will of course be much harder if you are younger, uh, especially if you're living at home. Right. Um, I would like, I would try to see if it's possible if I have any vegan friends if I'm if I'm like still living at home with my mom and dad or with e either one of my parents I would ask them if I could like invite a friend that also is vegan if I have any vegan friends not everyone has which is very unfortunate yeah. um but if you have uh then invite them and uh if you don't have that possibility, then maybe you could do something me and my mom did last year. Because when I when I said this, my mom was the one that said that, no, the food is not more important than you are. That's awesome. So I want to celebrate Christmas with you uh, in your way. 
and um, my dad went along with it. Um, unfortunately, my dad passed away last Christmas, so this year it will probably just be me and my mom um, again. I'm sorry to hear that, um, man. Ah, uh, thank you. But we did something because I have a really good friend, and she was sitting home alone for Christmas because she she felt that she couldn't go to her parents to celebrate Christmas. And I had invited her to come and celebrate with us, but she didn't have the possibility to go all the way. Uh, so we uh, made a video call. Oh. So when we sat down to eat uh, our Christmas dinner, we made a video call and I put up my computer so we could see each other. Uh, so we could sit down and eat and we can talk to each other. Uh, and awesome. that was very real, nice of you. Yeah, it was a really nice thing to do. And it felt really good. And I saw that she was happy about it. And we could all like sit down and, and talk and, and show what are you eating? <laughs> we are eating this. And <laughs> it was really nice, actually, uh, uh, much more than I could ever have imagined it would be. And that should be something that almost everyone would be able to do so so that is perhaps my um my my warmest uh tip for anyone to like try to do that if you can't invite someone to come to your home so you can sit down together with someone so you feel that you have like your vegan family with you <laughs> right because most people um, don't have vegans around them that they're friends with but yeah. a lot of people do have like internet vegan friends or people they yes. know. So I think that's a great idea to have just video with each other and have it set up and you can have the closest thing to a Christmas dinner with them. Yeah. So please try it. Um, I, I believe it could uh, save many people from, from the feeling of loneliness and sadness just to have someone that you know uh, you don't have to explain everything to it's like just a right. brother yeah. or system in arms. <laughs> right. There's no there's not a better way to spend Christmas than with people you share values with. Yeah, I totally agree. Totally agree. How are you going to celebrate your Christmas? Well, thankfully, my parents are very receptive and supporting. Um, so hopefully at home, it should just be us. We don't usually, we don't have any really family around us. They're in other States. So it'll most likely just be us, maybe, maybe a friend. Um, but yeah, they're super supportive. Like for Thanksgiving, uh, my mom actually made Saiten. She made a Turkey roast. And hey. so that was awesome. Um, yeah, when I'm home, they're pretty much vegan. You know, my dad, he has a hard time with the cheese. So he sprinkles cheese on the vegan meal, but that's close enough for me. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, it's stubborn, awesome. Stubborn old man. My, my dad was <laughs> kind of the same way. <laughs> so I can totally understand that. Yeah. And you know, I think, I think the longer that you've been like an omnivore, I think it's yeah. harder to shake it as well. Um, so I'm just glad that they're, I mean, I know us vegans hate the X percent vegan, but I would say they are probably 80% vegan. Let's say vegan 80% of the time. That sounds more yeah. okay with the vegan community. <laughs> <laughs> Even though there will be people that will disagree about that. And sometimes I do too, but right. I totally understand what you're saying. And um, I, I've, I've had um, the support as well from my parents. And when I get back home to visit, it's like, okay, we'll cook whatever you you can also eat. Uh, yeah, it's a great feeling when they support you. That's fantastic. Um, and so I, I really feel with others when I hear that they have like parents that don't even bother. They won't even want to gonna try uh, or just right. like spew all these words and judgmental thoughts about being vegan and just being like a the smaller person and so it's it's amazing to have supportive supportive family members and right. so 
I, I can't even, I don't even know how vegans that don't have support around them even make it. Like I know the animal reason, it really sticks you through it, but I can't imagine how much harder it is without that support. No, I mean, either. Right. Um, so, yeah. so how do you think that we can best or most efficiently kind of get people to see our view on the holiday traditions and kind of move us towards a more Merry Christmas, let's say it that way? Yeah, um, I think um, I think it's um, a tough question to ask because people are so very different, um, right? And some people will respond to some, a certain kind of message, but others will respond to another kind of message, and. So I believe that the more of us that use our voice to really speak out, you do it in this pod, I do it through my music. I have friends that they write a lot of like articles and send to the newspapers and get them published and people would read that, something I wouldn't do. And I have people and friends that like go to the slaughterhouses and stand outside. I have done like a couple of, vigils um i believe that all these different things that we can do all are all of them are needed because right. it will it will reach different people so if we are if we are like comfort comfortable in the way we share our views and thoughts and what inspires us uh, we could hopefully do it in the most positive manner. Um, I don't always uh, succeed in that, <laughs> um, um, but um, I, b I believe that most of the time, uh, a positive and, and a good mannered, like um, information way of informing people, I think it could be most beneficial. But at some points, some people they won't um reflect on that because it's mm -hmm. too easy to to deflect uh, so you really need to get <laughs> get to them and perhaps you need to be a little more uh pushy and right. um i believe very much that like the pushy vegans that is is something that people that don't want to be bothered came up with Oh, you're gonna be one of them pushy vegans. Yeah, I'm gonna because <laughs> I think what you're doing is wrong. <laughs> you can choose something else. Right. And so I believe like find the way that speaks to you and try to show people. I have a I have a good friend. She she does amazing uh cooking and there are loads of, of those people out there and just keep doing what you're doing but she is also very good at talking to people she can like sit down on the bus and just start talking to people oh wow and she, and she always try to go from whatever conversation they start with to <laughs> so have you tried right. <laughs> have you transition it in <laughs> yeah she's really good with that so uh, it's it's uh in, she's an inspiration in how you can talk to people really um yeah. it's not so, easy <laughs> no it's not and but um i, I listened to a, a, a very <laughs> long like uh video post from david rams recently where he um kind of broke down his own um activism when he ta was talking to people and, and told the listener like now what i did here is was to meet this person this way because of and if you don't know where to start look look, look for those videos uh, yeah. but i think that if you if you could find something that really speaks to you and you can find like the passion and and flame with that, you are going to speak from the heart. And I believe right. that uh, even though words may come forward as 
frustrating words or sometimes even angry words mm. or sad words if it comes from the heart it will always be like genuine right and i believe that is the most important way to like put forth a yeah no i definitely kind. agree because i do feel i can agree with you that the pushy vegan is kind of a harsh label and i agree it's probably on people who just don't care you know they don't want to hear it but i also think that there is enough of like the pushy kind or like you know kind of more in your face vegan there is out there like PETA their demonstrations I think they're yeah. needed but I think yeah. there needs to be balance as well and that's why I wanted to that's why I made this podcast and I named mm -hmm. it who's judging because you know I wanted like a where people would go you know for knowing they wouldn't be judged PETA is going to judge yeah. you but it's yeah. hard not to you know but so a little balance and that's why I was excited yeah. to get you on the show because yours is music so it's not judgmental you know you're just getting the message out there from your heart and in a way a lot of people listen to obviously more people listen to music than they do podcasts so yours has a wider audience a potential audience as well mm. and so I do have a few messages that could come across it a bit a bit harsh because uh, <laughs> sometimes i'm I'm very frustrated um like a, a song like conscience debated um, mm -hmm. really like that uh, people are stuck and I need to just like shake them so until they get it um <laughs> or like uh like I mentioned earlier like man is the devil it 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 really talks only about the horrors of the animal agriculture and in meat industry. So those won't be particularly kind songs, perhaps. But um, I'm, I'm, I will never, I would never in, uh, attack an individual. Right, as long as you yes. in your name. <laughs> <laughs> right. No. I feel like putting so the message on the song. Yeah, it's just you're talking about. The industry you're putting a message out like man is the devil yeah. you know i mean there's tons of different pieces of media that come out saying x is the devil you know humans are yeah. bad you're not attacking even the listener whoever's listening to it you're not attacking them you're just spreading the message so i don't think that listeners find your music judgmental <laughs> okay cool <laughs> I, I mean you know you have your message behind it and i think you portray it very well Lee, with your lyrics Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, I could mention one thing. I don't believe that we have, and um, it was really, it was inspired by this guy named Jonathan uh, on the like that um, animal rights camp I went to. Mm -hmm. That was really this huge turn point for me and huge inspiration for everything that has come to be dystopia. He said one magic thing, and it was like uh, all the all the profits from this song I'm gonna give to animals in need, animal rights organizations, and whatever. And my idea was, well, someone should do that with a whole, like not only just one song, but with every song they make. That would be awesome, right? But it's, it's a bit funny when you think those kind of thoughts. Someone should. Um, <laughs> that someone is most likely you, right? Yeah. So when I had those first three songs, it was like, okay, now now I'm just going to do this. And yeah, the, the thing will be that spread the message of veganism and animal rights, but I will also give away all the profits. Right. And you that quite literally put your money where your mouth was. Yeah. And it's really, um, people have been really kind as, and, and saying that I'm doing this wonderful, um, generous thing. But um, in, in a way, it's it's a bit egoistic because it, it's for it's my way to cope with all the feelings and grief that I have, and I need so I feel so badly that I have to do something. Right. I cannot. I cannot just like sit down and watch while everything <laughs> everything goes to shit. It's uh, so and I, I, I felt that I need to do this for me. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we'll see how it goes. But um, 
just um, with this last song, Christmas Blues, uh -huh. um, we passed uh, a nice, um, what do you say, part goal? Could you say it like that? Yeah, goal. It's like, because uh, I have a main goal, and uh -huh. we, we're like one fourth of that now. Um, and it, um, we just passed um, 25,000 Swedish crowns uh, in donations, which is around like $2,200. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. So, so what organizations do you donate the money to? It's it's been several actually. Um, uh, we have one of the first ones is uh, a Swedish organizations that that focus on uh, replacing animal testing with mm. uh, better options, more reliable options where animals are not needed. Um, so it's like science without animal testing, but the name is in Swedish. And, right. Um, um Toronto Cow Save what have, have been like um an inspiration to one of my songs. Uh, so I've donated money to them. Um uh, we have uh, a Swedish uh, organization called um Stockholm uh Wild Bird Rehab. Again, in it, the name is in Swedish, but <laughs> right. it's translated. So they take care of injured wild birds. So donate money to them. Uh, we have a, like a, a chicken rescue, um, uh, which I have donated money to. Um, sea Shepherd um, okay. also donated some money for the trial uh, DXE against Smith Smithfield Foods or whatever they were called. Uh huh. Um, and yeah, a few more as well, like yeah, Stockholm Home for Cats. Uh, I usually have like, when I get people to join my music and they don't, they do it for free because they find the cause is commendable. And I, I tell them that, okay, so thanks, thanks to your effort, I'm going to give away some money to a cause in alignment with my project uh, but if you have any wishes like if you have any choice let me know and we'll give the money to them so that's been the case most of the times um so um a few different ones um uh, viva vegan charity is one of the latest and hilltop animal rescue okay. in uh, Br in britain that uh, tend to rescue uh, foxes mainly okay but also other animals so uh and have have a couple of more songs that will be uh, they're on the way uh it's a collab with uh, an amazing uh, drummer from LA and oh. he has yeah uh, so he ha he wanted me to uh give money to the gentle barn um oh i've heard of that one yeah, I, I believe they have like three places in uh, in uh, U.S., but uh, this is the one uh, nearest L.A. So, so it, it kind of differs, but the the focus is always like in some way uh, give money to aid animals in need. That's right. the. It's great what you're doing. Thank you. Um, I hope that I can either I, either inspire people to do something similar, right? Um, or if anyone who listens feel that they want to do something to help animals, you can just stream the music. <laughs> right. No, that's what's awesome about it. Is it kind of just hit me while we were talking? Is that what you're doing? Is you're allowing people who may not have the money to donate to these organizations. And yeah. they just have to play the song and they're, yeah. I mean, it's obviously fractions of a penny per play, but they're still, every time they click play, they're essentially donating to the organizations. Yes, they and do. So you're opening the doors for everybody to be able to donate to these organizations, no matter what situation they're in. Yeah. 
So I've, I've been trying to spread the word. And at one point, <laughs> uh, uh, this woman came back to me and said that, well, I don't have the money to buy your songs. And I was like, you don't have to. You just stream <laughs> them. And whatever, uh, like you said, it's like it's it's very small per stream. It's a very small amount, but the streams add up. And yeah, and the it end, cost them nothing. It, yeah, it cost them nothing. And in the end, it, it if many people do this and more and more people are doing this uh more and more money could be given away and uh, at the moment since i have like right now six songs but in total i've written uh 17 songs so at the moment it's like when we come back to the uh, anniversary of the release uh-huh. i take out the money and give it away got um, it in the future, it will probably be probably be more like uh, once every quarter, <laughs> right? As you grow, so yeah, because uh, there's always a fee for uh, withdraw the money from the streaming platforms. Right. Always, <laughs> yeah, always. So, but it, it's it feels amazing. And another thing that I'm trying to do as well, which is it's almost like. It's close to a third of the money uh, that that's donated so far. It's like when I release the song, I I launch a fundraiser. Oh, okay. For for a cause, and and that way, people who have the possibility, they can also chip in to this to this cause, like Viva or Black Dog Foundation or Toronto Cow Save or whichever organization that is is chosen for this time and right. um, at some points um it has gone really well so that's awesome it's, it's, uh, it's amazing so people like it just like you said uh people are in different places and they have different opportunity to help out and uh, if if and some people have have the possibility to to help like give away more with a fundraiser and I have a few people that are supporting me on my Patreon, um, which is amazing also. Um, but anyone can stream the music. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I'm curious. I would assume they're all about the same, but just trying to help people maximize their efforts. Do, to yeah. your knowledge, are there any of the services that pay you more per stream than the other ones? Um, I've heard that Apple Music is one of the better ones. Um, and I also believe that YouTube is paying a bit more uh, than, for example, Spotify. And you have, you, you also have um, <laughs> a rare one, but you have this platform called, called Tidal. Uh-huh. And if you have, if you have their like luxury uh, subscription where you have like the highest quality of the sound, you will actually uh, give away 10% of your monthly fee to the artist you play the most that month. Yeah. That has not happened yet. (laughs) (laughs) And I don't know very many people who have like title. Yeah, I, neither do I. I think I know two persons. <laughs> um, but if I if I'm seeing at some point there will come like a chunk of money from Tidal, I will probably <laughs> know that. Okay, someone made me their top priority a month <laughs> or right. two. And that would be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but any any platform will do actually. It's like mm-hmm. uh, and music is all over the place. So and I could and s- yeah, you could you could also share the music. Right. So that other, others may find it. That's also amazing. Because mm-hmm. even though uh, it could be like, okay, this is not perhaps my song, but I might know someone who probably would like this genre. Share it with them, and they might be glad to stream it. But you could also like, uh, at the moment, 
I'm not really listening to anything. I'm going to focus on cooking my food. So I just put my phone aside. Okay, you could put the music on. And just Right, in the background. <laughs> yeah, in the background. You don't have to like be fully, full attention, listening to <laughs> the guitars, the bass, the drums, the lyrics. <laughs> um, and any stream, and no matter what hour during the day and doesn't matter if you're in the shower and the phone is in the kitchen and it will still help the animals right now so. probably the hardest question i'm going to ask you in this interview because i know they're all your babies but ah. you had to pick which is your favorite song that you've released so far oh uh, yeah that that's a <laughs> A bit mean question, <laughs> and you said it right. They're all my babies, um, but I, I am, I am very proud of the song "Heroes of Our Time," because um, it's important in, in in a few aspects, and the reason why it's also my favorite is what it means to me in terms of um, one. Um, I've been following um activists longer than i have been activist myself uh -huh. and during during a, a period of time i found myself like writing this message to people that i saw was like doing this amazing activism it's like you are the heroes of our time so i wrote it in several uh, different posts and i was like hmm that's a quite catchy phrase i should I should use that. I should write a song about that. And I felt that I really wanted to make a song that would acknowledge um, activists. And if they were listening to the song, they would know that I see you. I love what you are doing. Keep keep doing what you're doing because you are you are amazing and you are loved for what you are doing. So please keep it up. And um, my first initial thought was like, I'm going to do this like a Blink-182 kind of thing, punk rock song. But it was like, nah, nah, doesn't work. And a friend of mine told me, you should go more like bigger rock, uh, symphonic, bombastic thing. And I was like, that sounds like power metal to me. And uh, ever since I started playing guitar <laughs> back in 95, I was like, I want to play hard rock <laughs> music. Uh, so this is the first song that is like hard rock music for me, even though it, uh -huh. like power metal is a genre in itself. But it's it's like closest to the music that I always wanted to make. Makes sense. So, and it took a really long time to make it. There's a lot of people in, involved, and it came out really really great so I'm, I'm very proud of it and i have gotten amazing feedback from activists who have heard the song so if you're listening and you're an activist go listen to heroes of our time it's for you uh it's me saying thank you for whatever you are doing for the animals right i i know they definitely appreciate that i hope they do because i love whatever they are doing for the animals it's it's one of the things that helps me feel a bit calmer, <laughs> a bit more sane in this crazy world. So, right. Cause it's like you said, the activism, it's draining. So I'm sure a song just speaking to them, I mean, it probably means the world to them. I hope it could be, uh, could be the case. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm working on, on a video as well i've been trying to gather um video material from activists all around the world uh, to put together a music video um it's it's been lingering <laughs> uh, for a long time my initial thought was to release the song and the video at the same time but now it's like okay i'm gonna do the video as soon as i just have all the pieces that i need so hopefully it could come out in a couple of months time and it will be an even bigger push uh to show people that we are all over the world and you are 
all amazing. <laughs> right? It, I can't wait for that video. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, now, fun. just a few more questions here. To start out, what yeah. are your what are your let's say goals for next year? What do you want to see with Vistopia? Um, I definitely want to want to uh, release more songs when i started i had the idea i wanted to release like four singles each year uh so far uh, 2022 and 2023 was three singles uh i have a lot <laughs> a lot of them in queue so i hope to make 2024 a year when i release far more than four singles maybe five or six songs um and i hope also that i will get the possibility to play live unfortunately the scene in sweden is very small like the music scene is is tough as it is but <laughs> when you go with the message of uh, animal rights and uh, veganism it becomes almost non-existent so um I was in London in in October and played uh, on the Vegfest there, and I hope to be able to go to more places in the future. So, um, yeah. Right. So you've just hit twenty five thousand raised in your currency. What would your goal yes. be for next year? What do you want to hit by the end of next year? Whoo! Well, if if I could double that, that would be amazing. And there's no reason to set a low goal. So yeah, no, not at all. So we do, I reached like twenty five thousand Swedish crowns in two years. If I could make fifty at the end of twenty four, that would be amazing. It would be far better than I can really imagine. But it's like if people play the music and sp spread the music, anything can happen. Really. Right, and with you planning on releasing more singles this year or next year than these years, there should be no reason not to. And yeah. the higher you set the goal, the harder you'll work or promote or people will share to get you to that goal. Yes, I hope so. hope so. All right, now something, I, again, just like the beginning that I like to ask everyone is just what your favorite like vegan movie or book or documentary, or it doesn't have to be inherently vegan, just something that kind of resembles it. Yeah, well, um, like I said, that that speech of Gary Urovsky that mm -hmm. was the tipping point turning me vegan, that it, it, it's close to my heart. And I would recommend an, anyone to, to see and especially listen to it. And it's, it's an easy, um, what do you say? It's more like a lecture. Uh -huh. um than a documentary and it's easy to listen to because it has very few images um he, he shows a couple of videos in in that screening um but if you if you listen to like or, or watch uh dominion which is an amazing but terrible very hard to watch. Uh, movie it's heartbreaking um well watch that uh, but like I said earlier, it, it's like different, different aspects for different people. Like I heard people say that they watch conspiracy and they went vegan. Amazing, great. Um, so um, I, th I think there are several le really good ones. Um, what the health was one mm -hmm. of the earlier um, documentaries i saw and forks over knives really did something for me as well um so those are good ones um i enjoyed watching games changers but it really it wasn't uh wasn't really anything new to me got it um so i would i would probably go with the speech of gary jurovsky um awesome i'll make sure to put that in the at least a link or maybe just like the youtube video where they yeah. can click because if yeah. it i mean if it turns you vegan it hopefully could turn other people as well yeah I, I met probably five people who also said that yeah that was the one for me as well wow so, it, yeah it's got to be a good speech 
Yeah, it is. Uh, one of my closest friends today, uh, also a guy that makes uh, animal rights music, uh, Vanquish Evil. Uh, his name is Frederick. Um, we're close friends today. And he was like this. When we met up for the first time and we started talking, it was like, hey, Gary Wierowski, <laughs> best speech. Yeah, me too. It's <laughs> awesome. So, yeah. All right. So as we come to the end of our time here, what is? do you have any final message you want to give to the listeners? I believe very much that um, follow your heart. Uh, it, it may sound like a cliche, mm -hmm. but if you do, if you do what you love, and if you do what you believe is right uh, in in helping animals, you will most likely find a way that helps you uh, get energy from it as well. Uh, and and it's such an important part because, like we said earlier, there there's so many parts in this, uh, like spreading the word or just for some, if they are alone, standing up for themselves and declaring that, well, I'm vegan. I believe this is the right thing to do. Um, find find the thing that inspires you. Uh, find the thing that uh, you feel passionate about and focus on that. Because that was the reason why I started to doing this music. It was like I was, um, I was asked a couple of questions during like a, um, kind of a game, uh, and we were all activists standing uh, in, in a big square, and we uh -huh. we were asked to um, answer. It was like, would I would I be able to do this? Or would I not be able to do this? That was one of the, um, what do you call that? <laughs> Axis. Okay. Yeah. 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 Axis. So you have yeah. two lights. Yeah. Uh, and then you have, I think this is very effectful. This uh -huh. is a good thing to do. It will have a good effect. Or I, d I don't believe this will be very beneficial mm -hmm. at all. And as the questions was asked to us, Oh, I, I, I found that, okay, I'm standing over here, but those people are over there and we're everywhere. So it's like, if I do whatever feels right for me, I will have the best possibility ever to um, use the right words, uh, to feel good about it when I share it to whomever I share it with. And I don't have to think of or like be bothered or about i'm not doing this i'm not doing that because someone else will be doing those other things yeah so if i because i have a friend that told me that that you should you should start a podcast and mm -hmm. i was like yeah that could be a nice thing but that's not really my thing and there are not yeah. people that are doing mm -hmm. that so good and so very well so yeah just yeah. do whatever you feel it's your thing and we will help each other right follow your heart is definitely one of the best messages someone has given in one of those because it's true i mean if you're vegan you already followed your heart that's how you got here so why yeah. don't you doubt it the second time that's Just that's uh, perfectly <laughs> said <laughs> yeah so j just keep trusting that that feeling yep what you know is right and if you have whatever other talent you have you might be able to combine those two right you were or able just, to <laughs> yeah yeah I'm, I'm lucky to be able to um or i have a lot of friends they are uh, involved in like outreach and they they that is an amazing it's important to mention that as well because the outreach community is an amazing way most of the time to my experience to find um people who understand you people you resonate with uh and it's hopefully you can meet people and feel like wow this is my tribe this is where i belong and just being with those people will make you feel better uh, and yeah more at ease um so so that could also be a way and there are so many amazing ways you could be creative 
in that movement. Absolutely. So, yeah, try try to, if you don't know what to do, try to go out and find people that can inspire you. Right. Find something you're passionate about. Yeah. And go with it. Right. Well, I appreciate you hopping on the show. I had a great time chatting with you. And Thank I look you. forward to all of your future releases. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed talking to you as well. And uh, I'm looking forward to see what you're up to next. Thank you. You have a good day. Yeah, you too. <laughs> Bye. Please let me introduce myself. I am your host. I'm your Christmas ghost of your past and present. I am here to show you what is going on here in the Christmas fair. There are consequences.